I think as a business, you have an obligation to give back to the community. So you can do that in a variety of ways. You can do that by donating time of employees. You can do that by, you know, internships, apprenticeships, and those things. Or you can do it um, by investing in certain areas. Like it could be internships for science teachers or math teachers where you don't get any benefit, right? But you're benefiting society in a larger way. I think what we look for in the next generation of engineers is a combination not only of the skill set from a technology standpoint, but also the softer skills, so communication skills. And in this world we live in today, especially for the students and of, of the future that will be coming out of universities and schools, you know, they, they tend to spend more time on social platforms and less time interfacing with people. So we can't forget the softer skills of communicating face-to-face -face and overall communication. So I, I think what struck me the most um, during this Bright Sparks competition as opposed to last year's is this year I think we had a, a greater diversity of, of entries versus last year. Last year, almost everyone that submitted entries were involved as a STEM ambassador involved in some type of program. This year we had entries that were um, people solving problems to help society through to um, innovative products that they created and to companies they launched. And so I felt like there was a bit more of an entrepreneurial edge uh, to the Bright Sparks this year. And, and as last year, I find it very encouraging to see the number of entries and to see the quality of the engineers that do exist within the UK. We know there's a shortage and there's a gap of engineers in the UK, um, but the UK should be proud of the engineers it does put out and produce. I think within um, the UK in particular, I think some of this to a certain extent exists in, in the US and Canada and other countries. I find that society doesn't necessarily encourage students to go into engineering by explaining it as kind of you know a field that you can go and solve problems and you can help society and you can create new ways of doing business and I think engineering is painted as more of a mundane field uh, within many countries in the Western world and that needs to change I think the government needs to play a much larger role than promoting engineering um, not just as a discipline, but, but as a way to create innovation in the future. This year is the year of the engineer within the UK. Um, I think it's still in its infancy stages in terms of getting the word out to industry that it is the year of the engineer. So I don't think the impact will be as significant as it could be or will be potentially in the future. Every year should be the year of the engineer in the UK. There's a shortage, there's a skill gap that exists, and we need the ecosystem and the partnership of government and schools and businesses and venture capital to come together to help drive engineering in the future in the United Kingdom. Well, we're on our second version of one of the largest trucks in Europe called Titan II that we take to schools and it's not only for students but for teachers as well to give them a hands-on experience from design to build to maintenance and the processes that we focus on with our customers. So it's really hands-on and lets them experience things from robotics to design spark software tools, et cetera, for uh, future engineers. We also are looking at potential internships for teachers within the UK. So we're working on some initiatives now, as well as a broader internship program and apprenticeship program to help bring up the skill set that we need for the future. I think there is an opportunity for more businesses to, to be more involved in improving the shortage of skills within the UK. And, and I, I find there are a lot of great things happening um, and I hear about a lot of great stories, but it doesn't exist in one place. So lots of different companies are doing things that uh, don't get advertised outside of their own network. I'm, I'm quite impressed with what Sir James Dyson's doing with the Dyson Institute and how he's taken it uh, upon himself uh, to, to train and to create his own university-like program. So I think that's a great initiative. We need more of those. And, and it needs to be better coordinated. And I, and I think, you know, it's less about ROI today and the commercialization of the investment you're making, and it's more about where we want this industry to be five to ten years from now. And, and if we don't invest today, we will continue to lose the edge around innovation in electronics and be overtaken from a technology and innovation standpoint from countries like China. I think there is a role that small companies as well as larger companies like ourselves can play within the UK. I don't think it's the size of the company that matters because in my opinion, every company has a role to play in society in terms of helping 
to bring forth um, the skills, the awareness of engineering and to get more students into engineering um, and to improve uh, the, the overall skill set of the engineers within their training and their hands-on involvement from companies. And it's, not, it's great to sit in a classroom and go through lectures and textbooks and go to a lab, but that does not replace the need to get out working for a business, small or large, and get hands-on. Thank you.